Hi guys, um, I'm Casey. Um, Ellen is also my girlfriend, so I, I knew that I didn't want to have to follow her. Um, so um, yeah, thank you for that kind introduction, and it's awesome to be here. Um, I'll start 10 years ago. So in a few weeks from today, 10 years ago, I got a phone call from one of my best friends, and I totally remember this. I was sitting in Colorado for the holidays, and it was this, I lived in LA at the time, and I get this call from my buddy Ben, and he says, I've got an idea for a magazine called Good. Do you want to help? And I was like, yes, definitely want to help. Not sure I want to work for you, but I'll definitely want to help. Um, and this was sort of, he had been working on some other projects. It was an idea that I actually had been, so many parts of it I'd been working on myself. Um, we were sort of not working together at the time, but just hanging out in like our respective businesses in LA. And, um, you know, I knew, as soon as he said it, I knew what he was talking about and was really excited about what that meant. And so if you think just going back 10 years ago, so this is 2004, so the time is like, the economy is like picking up, it seems good, people are optimistic. Um, you know, it was an interesting time as a counterpoint to today or a few years ago in that respect. Um, you know, politically, I think we were, we were in a different place than we are today. Um, and I think, you know, certainly a, a little bit more, in many ways, more right of where we are. Um, and I think it was the sort of position of, of the U.S. in the world was in a really different place and something I think people um, were wrestling with. I think the term millennials didn't exist. I didn't yet know that I was a millennial, um, one, one of the oldest possible millennials. Um, but, you know, it was this, it was, there was some things going on. Um, this is actually like a page from a really early pitch deck of good in like circa 2005. And we were just sort of starting to realize that something was going on in the world that was a little bit different. Um, you know, this was sort of noting that there was like the Prius had emerged as this new sort of breakout hit of a car that was like totally weird looking and speaking to like a different kind of status symbol. Um, the Livestrong bracelet, if you remember those, it, like was this other totally weird like fashion meets cause thing that um, had exploded into the world. Um, there was this company, Ethos Water. Um, actually, Ben, the, the CEO of Good, had, for, had a short-lived idea of a company called Good Water until Ethos Water appeared on the scene. Um, and this was this company that kind of was like, it was sort of the Tom's model before Tom's existed. It was buy a bottle of water and, you know, water and donations go to water causes. Um, they ended up getting acquired by Starbucks a few years later. Um, and that Apple was sitting there sort of representing Whole Foods or like the local movement. American Apparel and the sort of sweatshop free um, thing was this other sort of note in our world. And so we're like, there's something going on. Like these are businesses and companies, but they're, they're trying things in a different way. Their, their products are connecting with people in a different way. And, and there's something actually that's tying all of these together. Um, and meanwhile, I think you had this sort of conversation around good and the idea of good was sort of sitting in a place, this was a magazine, I think they're still around, but it was sort of, this was the way good felt in the media world. It was like, to me, just missed me. Never would have even considered that this was trying to talk to me. Um, you know, it was sort of like, it, it was altruistic. It was about doing good. It was sort of about eating your vegetables and all of these things that, you know, it felt like good was in that space. It was something you didn't really want to be a part of. It wasn't cool. It was like, you have to do good. You should do good. It would be good if you did good. Um, <laughs> you know, but like, that was sort of the state of it. And then on the other side, like, if it's not that, no one was talking about it because it just wasn't taken seriously um, as something of, of substance or meaning. And so, you know, we got together, this sort of idea, we like are, this idea is percolating, we're hanging out, like we're telling people, it's resonating, people are like, there's something there, and they're really into this idea of, of talking about a new kind of good. And one of the first things we said was it was really about rebranding good and taking it from that place where good had been this thing that was almost like a pejorative, like I said, like, you know, not, not something that was, that was inviting you in to something where like, no, good is actually amazing. Good is sexy, good is powerful. It's about innovation, it's about creativity. And that's, that's the kind of good that is equally, if not more real and more important, and that's the sort of story we wanna tell. And so 
this is a few of us huddled together. This is like a year and a half later. Um, that's me in the back with long hair and a mustache. Um, and we're like assembling this idea into a magazine. And, you know, it was sort of through, much like you said, finding the believers, it was like, you know, through finding these people who were saying yes to this, like, we need this, this sounds exciting, this sounds interesting. And at that time, you know, this was still like a crazy weird idea. Like you had to explain it to most people. Um, but you, but you're sort of ears, when you're sort of in that entrepreneurial mindset, I think your ears are tuned to the people who are saying yes and giving you that positive feedback and all these people are saying, I don't get it. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah okay, that's fine. But whatever, you obviously don't get it. It's not for you. Um, and so, you know, it turned into this thing and this was the first issue of Good. Um, it said it was a little, you can't read it, but in small print it says a do-it-yourself personal manifesto and it's blank like you give a damn. And so, you know, it really set the tone for, for everything that Good was and still is and I think it's amazing like, even hearing Ellen talk, like it goes back to that. It's like, you know, build aprons like you give a damn, you know? Um, whatever it is, it, there's an opportunity for you to do it like you give a damn. Um, and that's really what, what sort of set the tone for good over all these years. Um, so we quickly, we launched this magazine and got to fall 2006, this magazine launches. Um, you know, it, we actually had put a campaign together, I'll tell you about in a little bit, but that was really cool and connected to nonprofits. We launched our website, we started to do video, like early days video, YouTube had like just been born. And if you remember the media world back then, I mean, Facebook didn't exist, Twitter didn't exist. Um, it's amazing how different the time was. Um, we started to do events around the country and like this thing turned into this like whole media company for people who give a damn. Um, and it was super fun, exciting ride. And you know now, so eight years later, um, it's amazing how much stuff we've done. How many things have worked? How many things haven't worked? You know, from these events all over the country to infographics were something we really sort of accidentally got in on and pioneered as a way of communication. We've made like who knows how many hundreds of infographics and videos. We've like um, you know done like little workshop hackathons. We've done um, web sort of. I don't know if I'd call them startups, but like little like web apps that we've built for doing grant making. Um, we actually, in the process of this, also spawned other parts of the business. So we mentioned, uh, you mentioned GoodCore in the introduction. And so GoodCore sort of became this idea of how we could use the expertise and ideas that we were developing inside Good to work with other companies. And so it's our sort of social impact consultancy. And so with GoodCore, we've been able to team up with huge companies like Pepsi, um, more recently Dick's Sporting Goods, and both with actually similar projects where we took their marketing money and turned it into a lot of community grant making projects. Um, so a tremendous amount of stuff that we've been able to do over the years. Um, and you know, we've even tried to like create holidays from time. That gone voting sort of uh, image is actually from a, a little campaign we ran around election day two years ago where we were um, we were trying to say, you know, how ridiculous is it that voting is on a Tuesday? Why would that ever be? You know, it should probably be on a day when people aren't working. That's not going to happen anytime soon. So we sort of did a voluntary, like, you know, companies raise your hand and give your employees the day off. And we, like, rallied, you know, about 100 or so companies to voluntarily, you know, make it a closed business day. And that was actually one, I don't forget where they were, but they actually put gone voting up in their windows, which is really cool. Um, so, you know, that's sort of good today. And if you, like I said, if you think of how much the media landscape has changed in however many years, you know, this, this landscape of good has also changed tremendously. What started as this sort of niche, weird, almost subversive idea about doing good is, you know, there were like a few dots on the landscape. We weren't even sure if we'd have enough to talk about, you know, um, past issue two or three when we first started, you know turned into an explosion where like there's more and more and things like delivering happiness, things like this week. Um, you know, Tom's Shoes was in our first issue and now is a tremendously large company. Um, you know, this was something I put together a couple of years ago and haven't updated yet, but it's, it's only getting bigger. Um, so I wanted to talk through that just about a few of the ideas that have sort of run through all of this. And it's interesting because we were in a, a little workshop earlier today about altruism in a way. And one of the founding premises of good was that this is not altruism. That though we are called good, that this wasn't about 
selflessness. This was about that, that meeting of sort of self-interest and the greater good. And that, that's really where true and sustainable good happens. Um, and you know, it was really also, like I said, in this rebranding good, these are sort of all these thoughts that went into reimagining good. And, and changing that from like the question being about how do you do good in the world to like how do we do awesome in the world? You know, how do we really go far above and beyond what's expected? And, and really, you know, again, so many of these ideas are w connecting so well tonight. Like, you know, blow people away to really, you know, wow them. And it's not just like a charitable act on the side or a donation on the side that doesn't integrate. It's a, it's a full present act that, you know, creates real impact in the world, both for yourself and the recipients of it. Um, and you know, there's also been this founding thing. Like we very much sort of were born in this this moment of interest in social entrepreneurship, and we've always had this sort of chart as an idea for us. Of it's not just about the normal profit loss chart, but it's about how do we do good and do well. How do we how do we create a a business that's in the business of doing good? And so how we're making an impact, how we're helping people, how we're benefiting society as we're building a business that really works like a business. And you know, we actually had conversations in the early days of good. Should we be a nonprofit or should we be a for-profit? And we, you know, decided on a for-profit much as much as anything on principle because we wanted to prove that this is possible to create a business that can also be doing good as its as its mission. Um, and you know, these sort of other sort of core ideas and values. This idea of pragmatism and idealism. And so much of good is sort of always aiming for this like intersection, for this like nexus of two ideas that seem to be opposite. And I think, you know, stuff Adam was talking to where I feel like the, the older mindset and still very common mindset is that you have to choose. You have to choose. Do you want to make money or do you want to do good in the world? Um, do you want to do what you love or do you want to make money? And we just sort of reject that as a false choice. It doesn't, it's hard work to find that intersection but it's totally possible and it's, it's the right thing to do for yourself and for the world. And so this idea of you know, being ruthlessly idealistic and ruthlessly pragmatic at the same time is really critical to the kind of company that we wanna be and the kind of society that we wanna see. Um, and that idea of creativity and engagement, like that creativity is not a frivolous thing and engagement is not just a sort of altruistic thing, but these are these are really awesome, important pieces to bring together. Um, and through all of it, it's really this idea of, of sort of another way of saying that blank like you give it him. It's, it's figuring out what's good for you, what you really love, what you really want to do, what really stokes your curiosity and your passion, and figuring out what's good for, for all, what's good for the world, what's good for your community or your town or your, the people around you, and sort of like getting in there and like figuring out where they overlap and then like pushing out from that and making that space bigger and bigger. And so that's really what good is all about. Thank you.